Hello. My name is Robert Luti, and as Tizzy just mentioned, my team's research has been focused on corporate strategies to increase the market share of sustainably managed forest products. After I give you a brief introduction of our client and our goals, I'm going to review our scope, research methods, and some of the challenges we faced, following which we'll summarize our findings and the recommendations we'll be making to our client, after which we'll turn the floor over to your questions. Our client, Green Blue, is a nonprofit organization which in, uh, provides companies with the tools and knowledge to become sustainability leaders. They have asked us to review the U.S. corporate market for products derived from sustainably managed forests, and in particular, to identify any supply demand gaps and possible solutions to those gaps. <clears throat> Our scope encompassed the supply of sustainably managed forests and their products on the one hand, and the corporate consumer on the demand side. In particular, on the demand side, we focused on the three major sectors of corporate forest product consumption, paper and publishing, packaging, and solid wood, with solid wood being divided into household durables and home builders. Keep in mind that while companies in a given sector are all sourcing the same kind of product or forest fiber, they are often of a very diverse business nature. Our supply side methodology encompassed studying the supply of North American sustainable forest acreage the ownership structure of the forests, the structure of the supply chain, and the certification process under the various third-party schemes such as the Forest Stewardship Council. On the demand side, we analyzed the forest product sourcing policies, goals, and other forestry initiatives of our corporate sample. And we categorized each of our companies based upon their level of commitment to sustainable forestry, as shown over here on the right. <clears throat> we met a number of critical challenges as we tried to develop a robust set of data for our uh, study. First of all, our scope was limited to only publicly available data, and in the case of a number of our private firms, there was very little reporting. <coughs> Secondly, our economic data, uh, trade statistics on forest product shipments and volumes typically was only of an aggregate nature. We had very little, if any, certified breakdowns of those statistics. Third, we were unable to convert what was already very approximate levels of sustainable forest acreage into actual production yields for supply estimates. And finally, across our entire spectrum of companies, we had no standardization of reporting of goals and other metrics. With that as a backdrop, let me quickly review our supply side findings. Canada is the North American leader in sustainable forest acreage, and government ownership predominates. In the US, private ownership predominates, and the structure is highly fragmented among very many small family holdings. This presents two challenges. One, certifying so many small holdings would be extremely time intensive. And secondly, the costs and administrative burdens of certification are often very prohibitive to small family landowners. Finally, the forest product supply chain structure is very complicated. There are often many intermediaries. And in order for a product to retain its FSC label, for example, until the final consumer, Every intermediary has to be certified. This is called chain of custody certification. <clears throat> there is hope. As the graph on the left here shows, over the last six years, sustainable forest acreage has been growing. And perhaps more importantly, on the right, the number of chain of custody certificates has been increasing. This, at the very least, implies 
a higher potential for, sustain, for certified transactions, even if we cannot directly relate that to actual supply. Let me turn to the uh, sub, uh, demand side findings briefly by sector. In the paper and publishing sector, we found an, uh, a relatively high percentage of leaders as well as uncommitted companies. Specifically on the leadership side, we have a very high engagement in sustainable initiatives. Leaders here have been targeting upwards of 80 to 100% certified content. They have been heavily involved in, act in uh, forestry initiatives directly with small landowners to, to actually address the supply constraints that they're, that they're finding. And they're involved in other sustainability initiatives, for example, the development of database tools of paper assessment that can bring buyers and, and sellers together and expand that marketplace. In the packaging sector, we find a, one very uh, interesting distinction. Forest products for this sector are typically being used as a delivery medium of the core product of the company not the core product itself. So when you combine that with the fact that forest products are but one of several packaging materials, including glass and plastics, it might not be surprising to find, to be, to find some of the results that we have here. That being said, this sector is highly engaged in sustainability initiatives of a different nature, such as recycling, reuse, and materials reduction. In the household durable sector, we find a high percentage of, of leaders, leadership companies. And what's very interesting to note here is that they have a very uh, significant trade association effort to certify their membership, which includes, as one of its requirements, certified sourcing. So there's some industry-induced uh, competitive pressures in this particular sector. In the home builder sector, we find the least amount of commitment. Um, it may be somewhat surprising, but there is a growing awareness among the leaders. We should note that unlike the other sectors, this is an industry that has been mired in a deep recession for the last four to five years. So it's unclear to what extent that recession has had an impact on any forest product uh, awareness or sourcing initiatives that would have occurred. Let me now just take a moment to sample some of the recommendations we'll be making to our client, which fall into these four categories. <clears throat> we believe that corporate activities to engage with uh, small landowner, landholders to develop cost-effective group certification programs should be continued and expanded. We also believe that corporate reporting should be standardized uh, involving benchmarks and uh, performance indicators and so forth, which will create competitive pressures among the various industry participants. On the supply chain front, we think that the concept of an open source platform of software or technology to actually uh, track procurement and certification along the supply chain, especially for smaller and uncommitted companies, could be a way of jump-starting more engagement in forestry initiatives in this sector, or in, across the sectors. And finally, under targeted industry associations, we think by engaging specific groups on specific targets, such as whether a price uh, premium could be supported by some of the products in the sectors, could actually help to stimulate more supply of forest products. And in conclusion, we're hoping that these recommendations and our findings will form a foundational tool for a new forest products program of our client. Thank you.